After the surprisingly successful season 1 of Doctor Who, the show would return on Halloween 1964 with a three-part serial, Planet of Giants. Over the next two years, Doctor Who would enjoy more success with William Hartnell at the helm, but due to the intense production schedule of the show, a number of stories from this time period would never find themselves developed. Welcome to part 2 of the comprehensive history of the First Doctor's untold stories. At some point in 1964, Victor Pemberton submitted a story named The Slide, which would have featured a sentient form of mud emerging from a fissure and taking over the minds of British townsfolk. However, this story was rejected by story editor David Whittaker on September 24th, 1964. Whittaker felt that the episode was too much of a mix between earlier Doctor Who science fiction ideas and Nigel Neal's Quartermass serials. However, in August, Pemberton had also submitted a version of the slide to BBC Radio, replacing the Doctor with Chilean seismologist Professor Joseph Gomez. This seven-part radio version of the slide was transmitted weekly on the BBC Light program, starting from February 13th, 1966. The following year, Pemberton retooled the slide as the second Doctor adventure, Fury from the Deep. During 1964, Brian Hales submitted his first Doctor Who story, a six-parter called The Dark Planet, intended to star Ian, Barbara and Vicky alongside the Doctor. The intended episode titles were The City of Silence, The Shadow People, The Doomed Planet, The Caves of Night, The Sun Bomb, Invasion by Darkness. The serial would focus on the planet Numir, whose sun has been extinguished. The people of Numir have found themselves divided into two factions, the surface dwelling Light People and the subterranean Shadow People. The Time Travellers discover that the Light People are fanatics who intend to launch a Sun Bomb, an artificial sun which will eradicate the Shadow People. The Shadow People sneak into the city by hiding in the TARDIS and destroy the Sun Bomb. The Time Travellers escape in the TARDIS as Numir is destroyed in the resulting fire. Story editor Dennis Spooner rejected the storyline on February 26, 1965, fearing that it was too similar to Malcolm Hulk's unused serial, The Hidden Planet. In September 2013, Big Finish Productions released an audio adaptation of The Dark Planet by Matt Fitton. Despite being the main star of Doctor Who, William Hartnell was interested in playing other roles in the show. To achieve this, he suggested that he could also play the Doctor's evil time-travelling son, who would be an enemy for the Doctor. This story idea was tentatively titled The Son of Doctor Who, but no writer was ever attached and this idea does not seem to have been seriously pursued. Whilst serving as producer of Doctor Who in 1965, John Wiles contemplated creating a story called The Face of God. This story would have seen a massive face materialise in front of the TARDIS as it is in space. The being claims to be God, but this is eventually revealed to be a hoax. Wiles does not seem to have pursued this idea any further and it was never developed. On February 26th, 1965, John Lucarotti agreed to develop an idea for a historical story set in India. He contacted former Doctor Who director Waris Hussain, who suggested the 1857 Indian Mutiny as a possible setting. Lucarotti was keen on the idea, but story editor Dennis Spooner informed him that a new policy forbade historicals set after 1600. In the spring of 1965, Lucarotti gained agreement from Spooner to instead write a storyline for a serial involving Vikings. This four-part story would see the time travellers captured by Leif Erikson and his Vikings after landing in 1002 Greenland. Needing some plutonic rock to repair the TARDIS, the Doctor convinces Erikson to lead an exploration party across the ocean to Newfoundland. After acquiring the necessary minerals, the Doctor takes Erikson further on to Nova Scotia, where the Viking orders the time travellers to remain to help start a settlement. The Doctor uses the unusual tidal properties of the Bay of Fundy to convince Erickson that he is a magician and he and his companions return to the TARDIS. When Donald Tosh succeeded Spooner, 
Tosh and incoming producer John Wiles were initially satisfied with the Viking storyline, but on June 24th, Lucarotti was surprised to learn that his storyline had been rejected. Frustrated at having two proposals turned down, Lucarotti contacted his agents, who soon earned him a commission to write The Massacre of St. Bartholomew's Eve. In 1992, Lucarotti would turn his Viking storyline into a short story for Doctor Who magazine, entitled Who Discovered America. On the 25th of April 1965, Robert Holmes submitted his first story to story editor Donald Tosh. This four-part story idea was called The Space Trap, and involved the Doctor and his three companions discovering a spacecraft controlled by robots, while the human occupants lie in suspended animation, waiting for the additional crew members needed to operate their crashed ship. The Doctor and his companions are taken captive and trained up by the robots as these replacement crew members. However, only three crew members are required, so the member of the Doctor's party that proves least useful is to be callously killed off by the human crew. This was mainly rejected due to the robots being too similar to the mechanoids in Season 2's The Chase. Holmes would later resubmit this story idea to producer Peter Bryant on the 20th of May 1968, and it eventually became The Crotons. On November 16th, 1965, Brian Hales was commissioned to write two storylines, one by the name of The Hands of Atom and the other named The White Witch. Both of these would have featured the first Doctor alongside Stephen and Dodo, but no other story details seemed to exist. These two stories were abandoned on January 17th, 1966, because departing story editor Donald Tosh felt that they did not fit the vision of the incoming production team of Inns Lloyd and Jerry Davis. Writer David Ellis submitted a story called The Clock for Season 4, but this was rejected by story editor Jerry Davis on April 4th, 1966, along with Ellis's other story, a spy thriller titled The Ocean Liner. Similarly, a story by Jeffrey Orme called The Evil Eye was also rejected on the same day, but we don't know any further details about any of these stories. Ellis had also collaborated with Malcolm Hulk on the satirical story The People Who Couldn't Remember. This was submitted in April 1966, but was rejected by Jerry Davis on June 15th as Davis wanted to avoid outright comedies in the wake of the poorly received story, The Gunfighters. Around the same time, writer George Kerr submitted three stories for season four, but these were also rejected by Jerry Davis on June 15th. The titles of these stories are all that remain. These were The Hearsay Machine, the heavy scent of violence, and lastly, the man from the Met. On June 15th, Davis also rejected the story The Nazis, which had been commissioned for Brian Hales to write on March 8th, 1966. The Nazis was eventually abandoned as the events it portrayed were seen as too close to the present day. Around the time Brian Hales completed The Smugglers in mid-1966, he also submitted a four-part story named The Hounds of Time. The story followed a scientist named Maloris dispatching robotic hunters to capture humans from throughout Earth's history, bringing them to his laboratory on the planet Terran. Ben and Polly are kidnapped, but the Doctor pursues them to Terran and confronts Maloris. He discovers that Terran's warlord, Vartan, is studying mankind in order to determine the optimal point in history to invade and make Earth a vassal of Terran. Having second thoughts, Maloris tries to stop Vartan, but is killed. However, the Doctor sabotages the computer with a logical paradox, depriving Vartan of the power he needs to launch the invasion. We only know of this story because it was one of the many unmade episodes discovered by Mark Hales among his late father's files. After completing his story, The Gunfighters, Donald Cotton submitted the four-parter The Herdsman of Aquarius. This would have featured Stephen and Dodo alongside the Doctor, and it would involve the revelation that the Loch Ness Monster was a type of cattle bred by aquarium farmers. The story was probably not seen as being in line with Davis and Lloyd's more serious vision for the show, and the pair had also complained that Cotton was hard to contact leading the story to be rejected on June 15th, 1966. In early 1966, electrical engineer Eric Lathwaite was a candidate for the post of scientific advisor to the Doctor Who production team, a position ultimately given to Kit Peddler. On June 28th, 1966, 
Laithwaite submitted an unnamed single episode story. It would have seen the Doctor, Stephen and Dodo facing extermination by the Daleks. Suddenly the Daleks are destroyed by an extra dimensional collective intelligence with mastery over atomic arrangement. The Doctor plays a higher dimensional version of football with the aliens, who take the form of a field of grass, and Dodo announces that their existence means she need no longer feel fear. However, the aliens realise that fear is an essential part of the human experience, and decide to wipe the memory of the encounter from the time travellers' minds. The idea was deemed unsuitable for Doctor Who, mainly because it utilised the Daleks without the participation of their creator, Terry Nation. It was returned to Laithwaite by story editor Jerry Davis on May 8th, 1967. On the 29th of October 1966, Part 4 of The Tenth Planet aired on televisions across the United Kingdom. This episode of Doctor Who was especially notable because it saw the lead actor change from William Hartnell to Patrick Troughton. This was done because of William Hartnell's failing health, but due to the character of the Doctor being an alien, the show was able to keep going as the change could be easily explained. From the 5th of November 1966 to the 21st of June 1969, Patrick Troughton would portray the Doctor. However, much like the William Hartnell era, the Patrick Troughton era of Doctor Who would see a large number of unmade episodes, including some that could have changed the entire course of the show's history. 